Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another edition of the show. So, um, first of all, we're going to talk about tannins and how they affect your mouth. So, um, I, I uh, found a little, a very short little article uh, on the International Wine Guild, and it actually just says how tannins are felt in the mouth. So, I'm going to read exactly what it says. Uh, tannins typically attach down the tongue. For most people, oak tannins attack the first third of the tongue, and grape stem tannins attack uh, attach the back maybe they meant attack um yeah i bet you they attack down the tongue uh attack the back actually they can constrict the esophagus you know that as grape tannins uh become more intense they can also attack the teeth and gums grape skin tannins are much softer and typically only attack the back of the tongue um so grape stem and grape skin both attack the back of the tongue anyway um and that's that's basically it so <clears throat> that's just what i was feeling up here was where the grape tannins the grape skin tannins up on the front whereas you feel it probably on your tongue more with oak all right so for that on to the next wines so um <clears throat> we're going double to nat <laughs> um and kind of reaching back a little bit far on one of them and then the other one, well, you know, we're we're just having some fun with this. So the first one, screw cap. Uh, this is the Don Rodolfo Vina Cornejo Costas. <laughs> excuse me, 2013 uh, Tanat uh, from the Mendoza area of Argentina. Now I got the hiccups. Great. Um, this particular. Wine for this vintage sold for $10.99 on wine.com. Uh, they are sold out and they have a 2014 vintage for $9.99. So we're going to put $10 as the uh, price on that. So, how did I acquire this wine? Ding. How did I acquire this wine? Well, in the industry, and sometimes samples come my way from the day job. So that's how it happened. So I can be compliant. Um, so yeah, it just was a sample, nothing necessarily to, to add the wine. It was just like, Hey, you may want to try this. Just nothing else. Just for personal preference, not, not anything else, but maybe I would add it to my list. All right. So, uh, Tanat, I've in the past said that if Darth Vader would be a great view, it would be Tanat because it's so dark. Um, this one I can see through. This must not be Darth Vader, uh, of wine. Um, I've had some pretty big and bold uh, Tanats, but reading more and more about Tanats, sometimes it's not that big in your face grape. So I may have to modify that little phrase. All right, so um, talk about this winery. Um, so the Cafayate Valley is home to but a handful of wineries, producing only 4% of the total output of Argentina wine. This is among the very best uh, the, of the 4%. Um, it's the valley's isolation and high altitude make it ideally suited for winemakers dedicated to the limited production of premium wines. Uh, they have wide temperature ranges or wider temperature ranges than any other part of Argentina. Uh, warm summer days, cool nights, plunging as much as 45 degrees. So they mean a 45 degree shift, not that it goes down to 45 degrees. So the diurnal shift, what it does is when everything gets cold, it helps increase the acid when it's hot, increases the sugars. So you're, you're getting this big shift and hopefully everything goes in balance at the end of the day. Um, the extraordinary variance is, is key to Don Rodolfo wines, preserving acidity, enhancing richness of aroma and flavor and increasing superior varietal expression. Um, 
So the we got some, we got a whole bunch of this. So the Lava Lavaque Winery was founded in 1870 by Jose Lavaque in Salta, Argentina. Uh, Don Rodolfo wines are named after his son Rodolfo Felix uh, Lavaque, um, who carries on the family winemaking legacy today. Um, their vineyards encompass some of the finest properties across Mendoza, Salta, and Catamarca wine regions. Um, blah blah blah. Mendoza is a viticultural powerhouse of all of Argentina, um, located in the eastern foothills of the Andes in the shadow of Mount Aconcagua. Um, vineyards are planted at some of the highest altitudes in the world and celebrates one of the world's premier grape growing regions. San Rafael is considered a particularly precious oasis in southern Mendoza, naturally irrigated by the Diamante, Diamante, Diamante and Atuel rivers. Uh, blessed with an arid climate with rocky, sandy soil and Andean minerals. Uh, the vineyards are about 2,700 feet. Um, the rivers are fed by pure pollution-free water from melted glaciers in the Andes. Man, they, they really know how to write this stuff. Um, right, Tanat. So, let's talk about Tanat. Um, it was taken to Uruguay by the Bosque settlers in the 19th century and populated... Uh, in Argentina, the grape is celebrated for its big, bold flavors, showcasing rich red berries and black currant with chocolate notes and soft tannins. Um, boom, boom, boom. So, then the next one is the next wine. Let's check it out. So, a little bit of reddish, maybe black fruit, dark fruit. I don't get a lot of earthiness. I don't get a lot of um, uh, minerality um, in that kind of stuff. Um, just some, just some fruit. Maybe a little bit of floral. 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 Maybe a bit of spice. It's all generic. I don't have anything specific. Maybe kind of a potpourri or cedar box aroma. Now I'm starting to get a little more specific. Specific. Don't you always want to correct people and say Pacific when they mean specific? It's kind of like when they say um, subscription instead of prescription. Or the other way around. Yeah, kind of cedar boxy with some reddish fruit, maybe a spice potpourri. That's bad. Again, this is all just like real subtle, nothing in your face. Definitely, definitely flavors here. Kind of a raspberry-ish um, flavor. Yeah. And, 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 and kind of kind of tart. I want to say sour because it's more of a tartness to it. Um, kind of actually blackberry. Did they say blackberries in here? I don't know. I can't remember. Du -du -du -du. Rich berries and black currant. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't get anything chocolatey out of this particular wine, but um, yeah, it's definitely some like blackberry that, and that tartness, that 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 little bit of I guess sourness when you, you kind of pucker, kind of pucker your face when you bite into a blackberry. This doesn't seem to be a full-bodied wine. I call it medium body at best. Um, high acidity, definitely high acidity. Um, it's ten bucks ish, ten ish bucks, ten eleven dollars, whatever. So I mean, it's just kind of a, a regular wine, something that's different than your run of the mill ten dollar bottle of wine from California. Um, it's not bad. Um, I wouldn't mind drinking this as a somewhat everyday drinking wine. You know, as a something to have with. You can have it with a cheeseburger. Um, 
you know, you could have it with, you know, pizza, you could have it with, you know, all kinds of just normal everyday fare. Um, yeah. A roast beef sandwich. That might be go good with this. Yeah. I see that roast beef sandwich. A little bit of mustard. A little, little brown mustard on there. A little Goulden's brown mustard. Yeah, not bad. I mean, it's not blowing my socks off, you know, but for 10 bucks ish it's it's a good value, and I think it's something different. And um, if you've never had a Tanat, um, this is a lighter version than I've had in other, in other Tanats, but um, this is from Argentina. So we will be going to the next uh, – so the next um, one we're going to go to is not from Argentina, but it is a Tanat. So let's hit, oops, let's hit wine number two. All right, so wine number two is the 2008 Buza Tanat from Montevideo, Uruguay. Now this, and I got it for, let's see the price tag here, $19.99. At Joe Saglimbeni's. I had this wine for a while. At least. I'm going to say I've probably had it for two years. Maybe a year, but I've had it for a while. So I'm kind of excited. I bought it for the show. I mean, I didn't buy it just because it was cool. I bought it for the show, and then I just kept going, yeah, yeah, I'll get to it, I'll get to it, I'll get to it. And then today, I was like, man, I need to do some shows. And I don't really have a whole – actually, I mean, well, I'm doing six wines today – I probably have another four-ish wines I could review. So, I mean, it's not like I'm out of wines, but I'm like, you know what? I have a Tanat. I got another Tanat. Let's make it a Tanat show. Tanat. Tanat. It's like kind of like the de de dead end. Um, so anyway, so let's talk about these guys. So, um, boom, boom, boom. So this was originally imported by the Southern Wine Group. Okay, um, they're now called Elixir. They're, they're now called the Elixir Wine Group. Um, so Juan and Lisa, and I don't have their last names um, because I didn't copy it from another part of the website. Anyway, so Juan and Elisa. Here we go. Um, Established Bodega Buza in 2000 by restoring a historic winery first built in 1942 by Numa Pesqueda. Um, so since then, they've, you know, Buza has become a very well-known and critically acclaimed winery. Uh, they are sourced from Buza's two estates in the Canelones region. region. They have five hectares in uh, Melilla, a uh, vineyard that surrounds Bodega Buza, located in the northwest section of Montevideo. Uh, Montevideo, I don't know. Uh, Montevideo. Uh, the 12 hectare Las Violetas, which is where this is from, um, is 39 kilometers north of Montevideo in the Violeta subregion of Canelones. All right, so um, they are they are a Atlantic influenced climate. They see four distinct seasons, and temperatures rarely exceed 93 degrees. Um, each half hectare is vinified on its own before selection. For various cuvées, um, bu, 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 bu. they also uh, they also uh, bottle Tempranillo, Merlot, Chardonnay, and Albarino. Um, let's see now, try to see if I have more stuff from the actual website because this came from the Elixir Wine Group set website. Uh, um, that's all about the same. The Las Violetas uh, vineyard, they have um, four hectares are between 16 and 30 years old. The rest are young wines or young vines. Um, let's see. We only are of our own vines. We only use those that achieve adequate quality standards. We aim to have well ventilated fruit with good diffused light, um, along with a careful guide of the canopy with maximum sun exposure. Uh, they produce about 120,000 bottles a year. And then um, they are on fertile, well-drained soils with differentiated soil layers in the presence of calcium carbonate. Um, 
they have concentrated wines and long cellaring potential. So hopefully this has cellared well, even though it hasn't really been, it's only been in the uh, cooler since I bought the cooler. So about a year. Yeah, a year. Um, the uh, Melilla soils are dark colored, of medium texture, slight acidity. Um, in contrast, the Las Violetas soils originate from sedimentary or volcanic rock, providing good rooting conditions for the vines. Uh, they have uh, grass and flower covering in the vineyards, um, adequate habitat for insects, hence, a, hence having a varied population and ecological control. Um, so they have a cover crop. And then uh, their climate has similarities with Bordeaux with approximately the ocean. Moderate and ocean moderates the summer temperatures, which they already said doesn't usually don't go above 93 degrees, and yada, yada, yada. Okay. So um, now on the back of the label, I was, it's all in Spanish, or actually, I, I think it's either Spanish or Portuguese, but it looks more like Spanish. But I kind of thought about it in Portuguese because they, they do speak Portuguese in Uruguay, but the official language is Spanish there. Um, I was impressed. I kind of got everything, but um, so I translate some stuff. So it's 70 percent. Hold on. The vinification um, is done by hand, and then the grapes are grano por grano. I'm assuming row by row. I'm not really sure what that means. Uh, it's fermented at 26 degrees Celsius, 70% in concrete uh, concrete uh, tanks, 30% in stainless steel, macerated for 15 days with two. I don't. I didn't get this uh, translated. Remontajes diarios. Um, maybe they. Maybe they stir. Maybe they. I don't know. Do something twice a day. Um, I didn't. I didn't get that, but there is aged for 14 months in um, oak barrels and uh, oh, on leaves. That's right, with boras. Uh, so aged 14 months on leaves in oak and uh, American French and American oak barrels. And um, let's see what else did I have on here? That was it. Uh, they harvested between um, the fifth and the eighth. Day of March in 2008, and then uh, they bottled it in, I guess, or they bottled it? Yeah, they bottled it in on 16th of December, I'm sorry, November of 2009. They produced 269, no, 26,980 bottles. This is bottle number 19070. Almost looks like it was handwritten on that. All right, so more information than you really know, but I kind of, for the geeky part of stuff, it's kind of cool that it's on there. Um, let's check it out. Definitely a lot more aroma action going on here than uh, than the last one. Put funk in there. Hmm. I'm about funk in a good thing and funk in a bad way. I don't know. It was almost like pork cardboard funk, but really slight. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely some mintiness, eucalyptus, um, red fruits, maybe even a bit of chocolate. But there is possibly corkiness in this. So let's taste it, see how it is. It tastes fine. So it could be just Maybe a little hypersensitivity on my part. Um, maybe I'm identifying an aroma incorrectly. Um, but on, on, on the palate, it's again um, kind of, I would say kind of minty-ish with, uh, with red fruit and, and not really a lot of chocolate. But, you know, it's kind of like having a little bit of chocolate. But it's, it's definitely uh, alcohol seems to be kind of high. 
and it's only 13.8, so it's not like outrageously high. So I get a lot of um, fuzziness on it, a lot of a lot of like grape skin or like I, I usually equate it to peach skin, peach fuzz. Um, so I get a lot of fuzzy tannins. So much wine left in here. I'm going to say it definitely looks darker than the last one. It's definitely fuller body. Um, it's not it's not super full body, but it's definitely a little more in your face. Um, it's a little hot. And it's, uh, what did I say? I paid 20 bucks for that. It's not bad, but you definitely want some richer meats. I could definitely put a stew with this, pot roast, um, heavier fare to definitely stand up to the wine. You kind of need that. Yeah, I mean, it's a good wine, but it's definitely not, it's not super fruity. Um, it's more acidic than anything else. Um, it's got that, it's got tartness to it. It's got kind of tart red fruits, a little bit of um, kind of mintiness, not a whole lot of earthiness to it. I don't really get any woods, woodsy, woodsiness. I don't get a lot of oak. I don't get a lot of cedar box. I don't get a lot of spices necessarily. But, um, I mean, it's a Tanat. It's 20 bucks. It's from Uruguay, which is this kind of their signature grape down there. Um, I would kind of hope it was a little bit better, especially for $20, but it's not, it's not horrible. Let's put it that way. I mean, I'm not going to tell you'd never buy this one. It's also from 2008. So, I mean, I know it says that these wines should be ageable, but, I mean, we are talking seven years not sure how well it was taken care of before I got it. And even then I had it, you know, in a regular room temperature house for at least a year and then um, put in the, in the temperature controlled situation. So that might've helped preserve it a little bit. But um, so this is like, I'm giving it a ringing endorsement, but I mean, if you want to spend 20 bucks, um, it, it's definitely a well-made wine. It's not poorly made, but maybe I was expecting a little more out of it because I've had some other Tanats, but they've been kind of domestic ones. All right, so um, that's going to do it for this show. Um, as always, thank you for stopping by and, and checking everything out. Click the links above to friend me up. Hit the donate button over there to send me some more ducats to buy some more uh, outstanding wine, uh, maybe more wine from other places like Uruguay or Brazil or you know whoever. Um, don't have a lot. Haven't had a lot of Brazilian one. Had a Brazilian Tanat. It was pretty good too. Um, let's see what else. Uh, leave comments below. When you go, if you watch watch us via iTunes, the podcast. That's how you subscribe. Leave me five star rating. Um, leave some great comments. I'll help boost up boost up the viewership on that. Watch me on YouTube. Watch me on the website. Um, and that's going to do it uh, for this week. Again, thanks for coming by, and we'll see everyone again next time.